talked earlier about the impact these divers must sustain, especially going into salt water. Charles wears a modified wetsuit to help him deal with that impact. Not much hesitation. Here he goes. Not a good jump. He seems a little hesitant. Oh, but did he drill it? Seemed to modify it halfway down and corrected his mistakes at the end. Well, he did something that was pretty smart. He controlled the dive all the way through. From 100 feet, you really don't have to jump too high, do you? Here he goes again. He actually almost just falls off, which is smart. Gives him a lot of control. Keeps his eye on the water all the way around. Good concentration, and he really put it away. Three eights and two sevens for Rick Charles. His total for that dive, 262.2. Next up, and reaching the perch now at the 100-foot level, Chip Humphrey out of East Orange, New Jersey. Very much in contention for the title. A man who was runner-up in this event to Dana Kunze last year. And currently, he is trailing the leader, Dave Lindsay. And Chip will attempt a back double somersault with two twists. A relatively difficult dive. The degree of difficulty factor here, 3.3, plus another 10 points for the height itself. This is a big dive for Chip. Two somersaults backwards with two twists. Good jump. Oh, yeah. Nice dive. It went, slipped a little past vertical, but a pretty good dive, I'd say. And that will really put a lot of pressure on Dave Lindsay as Chip Humphrey will temporarily move into first place after that effort, pending, of course, the dive to come for Dave Lindsay from 100. I think it's incredible how far this sport has progressed over the years. This is really a tough dive. He's doing it from 100 feet. Makes it look easy. Well, now we'll take a look at Pat Suker. Suker was tied for the lead after the first round. However, his effort from 90 feet was a relatively simple dive, and he received all seven. So after two rounds in third place, and now attempting a forward triple somersault with a half twist. Donna Malloy, his girlfriend, looking on. He's going to do this in the pike position. Pat just falls off. He doesn't use a lot of spring. That's smart. Gives him a lot more control. Here he goes. Looks good. Slipped a little past vertical, and it created a lot of splash. It could hurt his score. But well in control throughout the dive. And as he emerges, Donna and the rest of the crowd applauding the effort for Pat Suker. You see what he does. He keeps his eye right on the water. Just a little jump. Nice tight pike. He comes around, he just loses it a little bit here, but a pretty nice effort. And for the veteran from Dayton, Ohio, now making his home in Orlando, Florida, the judges are unanimous in their opinion, as Sucre is awarded all sevens in a total of 266.7. Next up the ladder is Dave Lindsay, the leader, after the second round. We'll see his third round dive when we come back. In this final round of the World Invitational High Diving Championship, you're looking at Dave Lindsay of Daytona Beach, Florida. The first time he has ever competed in a professional high diving event. He is the leader at the end of two rounds, and upcoming now will be his final dive. And he's not going to be conservative either, because from 100 feet, he will begin, Ken, by going into an arm stand. This is really unusual. A normal person would have trouble just thinking about standing 100 feet. He's going to his arms, and he's got speed wrapped around that stand, and I can't believe this. He's going to do an interrupted cut-through reverse one-and-a-half somersault, so if he wins the title, he will have earned it. And you bet. 100 feet, arm stand. He's Now he's going to go off and come back towards the platform. Do a one-and-a-half somersault. He'll interrupt it in the middle. Here he goes. He's a little cock. He's a little twisted. Twisted on the finish, but it... we'll have to see what the judges think. I don't know if they can see it from where they were. It looked like he came in just about straight up and down, but as you say, he's listing to one side. He needs two sevens and one eight to maintain his advantage in first place. There's the problem. As he's going off the tower, his legs went to the side. Now he's twisting all the way through. He's trying to maintain control, getting it back. He does a nice job with it, especially from 100 feet. 
And I can't really tell whether the judges could see it from their angle. Good recovery. The marks range from six through eight, and they are good enough to keep him on top. 283.8 points as we have another look at Dave Lindsay. He had a little problem with the arm stand. He really didn't hold it too well, and that caused the twist all through the dive. He's fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. Finally gets it in straight up and down, but he is a little twisted on the entry. His total just one-tenth of a point better than Chip Humphrey after three rounds. Now we'll take a look at Dana Kunze defending his championship, but Kunze after the second round in sixth place. However, he is attempting here a very difficult dive, a forward double somersault, two and a half twists, and the degree of difficulty is high enough so that Kunze still has a chance to wind up in first place, but what he would need is the equivalent of two nines and a ten. Well, he's a very confident diver. As I said before, he's dominated the sport for a number of years. He certainly isn't going to be backing up here. He's doing a forward double somersault, two and a half twist. Very difficult dive. Dana, a fellow we've seen him come from behind off times. It's not over yet. No, Dana will never give up. Quincy looked like he was ready to go. Normally doesn't take very much time. A little trouble to take off. Pretty nice dive. A little twist on the finish. Dana Kunji, he's had better efforts, and I doubt that'll be good enough to move him very far up in the standing. As Kunji takes a look at the judges, all sevens for Dana and a total of 283.5 points, so he will finish in fifth place as Dave Lindsay clinches the title. Edging out, Chip.